Hi guys! Instead of doing a video for you myself this week, I'm going to be handing it off to Jasper for another armor painting tutorial, and specifically he's going to be doing a German half track for you this time. Now just a quick little bit on German half tracks, there were two major types, the 250 and the 251. The 251 was sort of shorter and smaller and squatter, and the 251 was bigger and longer. And then besides that, they were kind of subdivided into more specific types, which to refer to whether they carried guns or troops or reconnaissance or even rockets. The sort of the secondary sort of number attached to them gives you a clue as to what their more sort of specialized function might have been if they had one. Uh, the model that Jasper is going to be doing specifically is this. This is a 250 slash 9. So it is the smaller model. And the 9 refers to this. It's carrying a turret with a 2 centimeter gun on it. This particular model was used a lot for reconnaissance and is kind of more of a late war vehicle. Uh, this particular miniature can be ordered from Warlord Games. Now, <coughs> irregardless, of the specifics, the 250s and 251s are all similar enough to each other that basically everything being covered in this video can be applied to any other kind of half track of German origin. They kind of all, it's all, it's all very, very similar in many ways, basically. Now you may have seen that the half track has already been kind of base coated in a sort of German yellow color that's used on their armor very frequently. Now. I wanted to say that the biggest thing that I hear about Jasper's videos is these are all well and good, it's really cool to see all this airbrushing, but like what do I do if I can't airbrush? So that's what we're going to be talking about this time. Jasper is going to be showing you how to paint uh, <clears throat> the rest of this figure by hand using brushes. Now <laughs> what you saw here this, to be completely fair, has been airbrushed. This uh, yellow, this is Flair Air um, Surface Primer in German Dark Yellow, is what you're seeing here, and it's been applied over a layer of black that Jasper sprayed on. So what do you do if you don't have an airbrush? Well, you can apply both of those colors by hand with a brush, but uh, what will be even better is if you just use spray paint, uh, because that way you're getting a lot of the benefits of um, airbrushing, at least, sort of initially, and you don't have a lot of the downsides to it. Now, admittedly, you can't do all the sort of complex sort of shading and stuff that you could with an airbrush, but just when you're kind of starting out and putting on the base coat, might as well use um, spray paint. So just spray on some black primer, and then go ahead and grab a can of that sort of dark yellow German armor color, and you may ask, where do you get that stuff in spray paint? Well, several people make it. Battlefront, Tamiya, I think maybe Plastic Soldier Company. There are several manufacturers. I will uh, list in the description box some sources for that sort of German yellow as a spray paint. But, so anyway, we're kind of at the stage where we're going to continue uh, highlighting and detailing this guy. But because, of course, uh, Painting a vehicle like this by hand is rather more time consuming than doing it with an airbrush, and also because Jasper already is a slower worker, uh, we've decided to break this video down into two parts. So this time around, Jasper's going to be showing you how to panel shade and do a sort of simple hard edge camouflage just using a brush. And then next week, or you know, in the next episode, he's going to be talking about uh, how you can. Uh, finish off this gunner or sort of command figure. I'm not sure what he is, the guy looking out of the turret, I guess. And then also how you can do a little bit more extensive and detailed weathering on your vehicle to get a more natural and realistic look. Okay, so for those of you who have seen some really nicely uh, painted airbrushed uh, armor models, they often employ a technique that's called panel shading and what that basically means is you're taking the airbrush and you're spraying sort of all the individual parts of 
the vehicle in such a way that you get sort of a lighter color gradient at the top of every sort of, sort of individual panel on the vehicle and it sort of gradates down to a darker color towards the base of those panels. Now that's something you can do reasonably easily with an airbrush but that's kind of more difficult when you're painting but at the same time it looks good. So what we're going to be doing here is kind of doing kind of a fake, I guess, poor man's panel shading technique. What Jasper has done here is he has taken some Vallejo Air Surface Primer in German Dark Yellow and he has lightened it a little bit using a MIG Acrylic Colors um, Dunkelgelb. So it's just ever so slightly lighter. We're going to be doing this in steps and this is the first step. And so what he's doing is he's applying it now starting at the top of every sort of panel in the vehicle and he's then sort of pulling it downward. Since this is the first layer, he's pretty much going to be covering the entire panel with just the exceptions of some very sort of bottom edges and some dividing lines between small pieces, but he's going to be basically shading the entire um, half track and all the sort of separate pieces of it with this color. Now Jasper has added even more Dunkelgelb into that original color and he's going to start applying it again. And now you can see how he is only going sort of a fraction of the way down the panel and then he's kind of stopping. It's very important that when you do this that you keep your paints very, very thin, first of all, and secondly that um, you don't make the gra graduations between the different colors very extreme. If the, the, the extremer and starker they are, the less effective this is going to look. So you want to, each time, you don't want to add too much of the next lighter color in. Obviously, the more steps you make, the more time consuming this is going to be. So it's important to try to find sort of a balance point between sort of doing a realistic amount of work on the vehicle and, you know, getting a pleasing result. So you can see again, he's, he's, he, here he's always just stopping kind of two-thirds of the way down each of the panels and just kind of making nice, smooth, straight lines sort of to, to, sort of to divide kind of off where the lighter color and the darker color is going to be. Uh, it should be pointed out that on the turret, it's a little bit different. Normally, of course, you want it lighter towards the top and darker towards the bottom, but that's not always the case. In, in, in this case, the, in most cases here, it's going to be lighter towards the top, but sometimes if the armor slopes in the opposite direction as it does on the turret, you actually are going to want the lighter color towards the bottom of the panels, and you're going to kind of want it to be darker towards the top because it's sort of sloping outwards. So, you know, you kind of have to make those adjustments as you work. And here the process is just going to continue with, again, more of the MIG Dunkelgelb added in. Now that we're sort of up to the third color, you can really start to clearly see the sort of dividing lines between the different segments. And while you can see them, they are pretty subtle. Um, obviously, you're kind of creating bands of colors. It's kind of like an ombre effect almost. And you will probably want to make sure that the sort of thickness of the different bands of colors is pretty sort of evenly spaced here. So, you, you know, you, it's, you, you don't have one area or one band that's going to be a lot thicker than the other. That's just going to um, create a more pleasing effect. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention here is I said it's important to keep the paint thin, and that's because you're working on very large, smooth, flat surfaces, which are, can be tricky to paint in this way. So, normally I would use water to keep my paints thin, but the problem with water is when you're working on these smooth surfaces, it can tend to, it can tend to pool and create sort of unevenness in your paint, and that's really not what you want here. So, Jasper's actually using a thinner medium to make his paint, well, thinner instead of water, and that's a product that's available for most major paint manufacturers. You can kind of see it in the back of the shot there, what it looks like. This particular product is the one from Vallejo. So he mixes up the color to the kind of the shade he wants, and then he adds some thinner medium in it to make it just flow better, to make it just smoother and thinner, and so that he can put nice, even, fairly transparent layers onto the model. 
By this point, Jasper has gotten to the fourth highlight layer. You can see really clearly the very even bands of color. The, the difference between them is subtle, but you, know, you can definitely see where the different lines are in the paint. And th this is again just a bit more Dunkelbegelb has been added to the base. And this is an example of what I was talking about earlier where he is making the panels lighter towards the bottom on the turret just because the paneling is facing outward so it's lighter at the bottom rather than at the top. As you uh, go up in highlight layers, like with pretty much any highlighting, you're going to be applying progressively less paint to the model. So you know, you're just, it's going to get, actually, kind of the process is going to get faster and faster as you go on, especially since at this point you're not going to have to worry about, like, picking out the different uh, pieces, individual pieces, and maintaining the seams like you were when you were painting the very first layer. This is the uh, fifth and final highlight layer that's being applied. It has quite a lot of Dunkelgelb in it, and this particular level is quite quick to do again as I said because it gets less as you go up and in fact when you're at this level you aren't even going to need to apply this highest level to all of the panels depending on sort of their size and the amount of slope that they've got on them you may not really find that you need to highlight all of them to sort of the most extreme level so that is another reason that this particular sort of last um, highlight is going to take the least amount of time for you to do. Now this next step is rather time consuming. Uh, Jasper is going to start edge highlighting everything. What he's done here is he's taken some Vallejo beige and mixed it into that sort of lightest highlight color he already had. And of course he's continuing to make sure that there's plenty of that thinner medium in there. In this case, not so much because you need a thin color, you're worried about it how it sort of pools on the large surfaces, but just because you're going to be painting a lot of fine, delicate lines, so it's really important that you get a nice, smooth, even result. And yes, this is obviously time consuming because what you're really doing here is you're going along and basically applying this light, thin edge along every single panel and every sort of separate piece where there is any sort of sharp divide. You just want to kind of run very carefully along, take your time. If you have trouble with this kind of brush work, you can sort of do it in a sort of a staggered way because, you know, I have trouble with that too, just painting one smooth continuous long line. What you can do instead is paint sort of little short lines and sort of join them up. That's, that works better if your brush control is a little bit lacking like mine is. But the main advice for this is really just take your time, have some you know, have some patience and, you know, you'll get good results. Now at this point the basic shading of the vehicle is complete, so Jasper is now going to move on to painting the camouflage. Now as I said at the beginning, we were going to do a hard edge camo uh, here, and then if that's for mainly practical reasons, because if you're going to be painting something by hand, doing a uh, soft edge camo is obviously going to be a tremendously bigger deal for you. Uh, you know, you've probably seen my tutorials where I painted soft edge camo on a uniform and that is difficult enough. You can imagine what it would be like here. So this is more practical and if you are going to hand paint your vehicles, well you want to go for a hard edge pattern. So the one that Jasper has chosen here is going to be green and brown. Now he's made the base of the sort of the green shade here by taking German camouflage bright green and he has lightened it somewhat with beige. And so for this first step he's just going to sort of roughing in the pattern, just figuring out where it's going to go, what it's going to look like on the vehicle and just sort of blocking out the different areas. I suggest that you go ahead and look at some sort of reference book or find some photos online to get an idea of what kind of pattern you want. He's going for a fairly small scale delicate pattern here which is I think quite attractive but you could go for larger blobbier rougher coarser patterns and it'll probably take you less time. I mean a small if you're going for a smaller detail level like this it's just going to be a slower process obviously but this is a hard edge pattern that is a 
appropriate for this particular vehicle and time period. You will see it some, and maybe not, maybe not necessarily the most common, but. And there's just going to be less of it on the model. But you could, of course, reverse that. If you prefer brown, you're more of a brown person, you could have bigger uh, brown areas and smaller green areas. I'd probably do that because that's more to my taste. But this will look really good as well, just what you like. But again, it's just about blocking in all the areas where you want there to be brown spots on your vehicle. And here Jasper is uh, shading the brown. He's gone back and added in a lot more of just pure flat brown to get a darker shade. And he's again looking for where the brown spots intersect darker areas on the yellow. And he's applying then just dark brown bands over those areas. Again, this it shouldn't take you too long just because the brown areas are relatively small, but you may need to be a little bit more careful just because you can see in this, with this part at least, that the, the, those areas are rather delicate and sharp, so you'll just have to be a little bit more careful with your painting. And now Jasper's taking a lighter version of the flat brown, so with extra extra beige in it and again finding where the yellow intersects. 
the brown and is light and applying the lighter brown in those particular areas of the pattern and it is again not a very time consuming process here because of the brown being relatively um, scarce in this particular design. And now Jasper's going to f finish up the brown areas by making an edge highlight. He's just put in quite a lot of beige. You have a very, very, very pale color here. And even though it may seem too light because you're applying it in such small amounts, it'll look fine. And if you're using the thinner medium along like you should, it'll be quite, quite uh, transparent anyway. So here Jasper is looking for where the brown intersects any ed sharp edges or panels or, you know, transitional areas. And he just is going to apply this very thin line just in sort of you can see kind of sort of staggered bits so that he gets better brush control. Next Jasper is going to apply decals to the model but first he's going to add some gloss varnish to the areas where they're going to go to prepare the surface and make it smoother so they stick better. Now Jasper is going to start applying his decals. He's using uh, bits from a lot of different kits he has laying around uh, something from an Italieri uh, Tiger kit and also from a Rubicon Models kit. Usually you can kind of just bodge these together out of whatever you happen to have laying around so long as it's the right scale and it's appropriate for whichever, you know, force you're painting. He's just using paint brushes and tweezers to get the numbers in place after he's kind of released them and soaked them with some water. And once he's got them where he wants, he uses a um, Q-tip to sort of absorb the extra water because then they won't float around as much and you can kind of lock them down where he basically wants them to stay. So here's our little 250 half track at the end of part one. Obviously there's still plenty of stuff to be neatened up. This isn't done in any way. Plenty of weathering and detailing to do. The the gunner needs to be painted, all that kind of thing. But I'm really impressed with how, honestly, this whole panel shading thing worked out. It's, yeah, it's not real panel shading. You would get a much better result, a smoother result, if you did it with an airbrush. But considering this was done by hand, I think it's a really nice way to add more sort of contrast and shading to your model. And yes, it took a lot longer, too. If you'd done this with an airbrush, it would have gone a lot faster, and you would have gotten you know, better results faster, I should say. But that is, that's the price you pay. If you want a good result with a brush, you're going to have to put in more time. And even if you do, it's probably still not gonna look as good as you get with an airbrush. But you know, this is a good compromise for people who just don't have that tool available. And I know there are a lot of us who don't. So uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like it, share it, leave comments, let us know if you're liking this whole thing. Um, and of course, be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, especially because you want to see part two of this video where we finish off the half track next week. So please do tune in for that. And I will, and Jasper actually too, we'll see you next time.